My name is Martin Rosser and I'm a academic clinical neurologist. I've been involved in dementia research now for pretty well 40 years and looking back it has been a remarkably varied career. It started when I was a uh, trainee neurologist and took time out um, to undertake some basic laboratory research in Cambridge working under Professor Leslie Iverson. And this involved looking at uh, neurotransmitter markers in the post-mortem brains of those who had suffered from a dementia. This was an exciting time because it wasn't that long after the discovery of the effects of levodopa in patients with Parkinson's disease who had a, a, a loss of dopaminergic neurons. It wasn't so simple in dementia um, and although there has remained very good evidence that abnormalities in the acetylcholine system are important, it's only one very small part of what we now understand as Alzheimer's disease. But looking back, the perception of dementia was something that happened in the elderly and reference was made to senile dementia. Alzheimer's disease was thought to be mainly in younger people as was described by Alzheimer himself. Or if dementia wasn't explained by Alzheimer's disease, it was thought to be cerebrovascular disease um, due to multiple small or larger strokes. If we fast forward to now, it is totally different. When I see patients in the cognitive disorders clinic, there are many, many different diagnoses that we now make. Alzheimer's disease remains a major um, diagnosis, but we now know that a small proportion of those are due to very specific um, gene defects that can be inherited as an autosomal dominant disease. Um, and that leads to the deposition of amyloid, uh, a key marker of Alzheimer's disease, and of disruption of the um, internal cytoskeleton due to abnormalities in the microtubule associated protein tau. But now there's a, a vast range of diseases that used to be um, clustered under the rubric of Pick's disease, now referred to as the frontotemporal lobar degenerations that can affect either people's behavior or their speech and language. Moreover, we've moved from just thinking about dementia as something that's severe and just affects the older person to looking for picking up these diseases at a much earlier stage in order to intervene. And some of these um, causes of dementia can have significant treatments. And we can look forward to um, treating by gene regulation and expression, those hereditary diseases, um, as well as potentially seeking treatments for early disease. We're also much more aware now of subtle cognitive impairments um, in individuals that may be affected by many different uh, systemic diseases. We're now much more alert to the fact that damage to the heart, to the lungs, um, to the kidneys can cause cognitive impairment. An interesting interest in assessing a cognitive footprint of various different diseases and interventions. And during this time, it's involved not just interactions with patients and clinicians, which has been extremely rewarding, but um, interactions with basic laboratory researchers, with biophysicists, with molecular biologists, um, with neuropsychologists, but also with architects, those who are experts in the built environment, with philosophers because of the insights in how the human brain works, and with artists and musicians. It has indeed been an extremely rewarding career that I can thoroughly recommend to you all.